Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Coffee and Cargo. A uh, few introductions before we get into the agenda today. My name's Emily. I'm a project manager here at Interlog. Um, today, I am joined by Ben Schwingle, International Operations Director at Interlog, Owen Campbell, Branch Development Manager, and Rachel Thielen, Marketing Director at Interlog. Let's get into some topics. Um, so we have the July and August general rate increases, the GRIs. We also will be touching on peak season. Is it a normal peak season, abnormal? What are we kind of seeing there? Um, we'll also give an update on blank sailings. And we'll touch on if the Canadian labor uh, strikes are back and also some current events. Additionally, we do have a Q&A. If you have any questions for us, please put them in the Q&A box below and we'll get to them if we're able to. With that being said, um, Ben, regarding the July um, and August general rate increases, I know the July ones kind of came out last week. Can you kind of give us an update on that and what we kind of expect with those? Yeah, sure thing, Emily. We do touch on the GRIs often in these episodes because everyone is watching the trends um, indicate how much freight's going to cost coming in Trans-Pacific. And we're speaking just Trans-Pacific rates right now. After the lowest rates in 10, 15 years, they're now starting to rise again, following the normal trends through the summer as uh, the general rate increases. That's like what the carrier announcement is for their step up increases. Those happen every two weeks, typically. And typically, pre-COVID, what would happen is a GRI would be announced in the days before the beginning of the month, or the days before the middle of the month, to say, in the next two-week period, rates per container will increase $200, if that's the amount they, they chose. And then you could budget on that and plan your departures around that $200 increase. This year, they're making the announcements, but they're casting out much higher numbers in that period of time right before the month starts. So instead of saying $200, count on it, they're saying things like a GRI between four and $500 won't buy, or as high as $1,200 won't buy. And then we and other freight forwarders are monitoring that to see what they reduce to as they kind of jockey for position with other competitors, other carriers. It's not uncommon um, this year for every GRI of $500 to actually settle at $100, $150. So the approach we're taking and others seem to be following is being informative with your customer. Yes, they're announcing a $500 or $1,200 GRI. We're not expecting that, and we'll let you know what the rate's going to be upon loading. But right now, budget more than you're paying, and we'll keep you informed. But for sure, through the summer, rates will follow the normal trend upward. And into peak season, right? I mean, this is typically when we've already passed the school supply season. We're now coming into holiday restocking. Halloween and Thanksgiving, Christmas, and all the winter holidays. That's upon us. But as you know, Owen and I were just talking about this week, so many of our customers that sell those products have surplus inventory from last year. Like, Owen, would you agree? That yeah, I mean, I think I've seen that across the board. Um, a lot of customers have moved more to an LCL uh, format and and moved away from the just in time. Uh, delivery system, you know, everybody got bit by COVID. And uh, as the inventory came through with the backup, um, inventory rates rose. And then through that, now with uh, kind of a softer market, the things didn't move off the shelves like they were planning on or hoping to. So I think that we've seen a big influx of inventory and uh, softening of the market you know people aren't bringing in as much this year since there is so much left over so it i, I would believe it to be an abnormal peak season um, definitely a lot lighter than typical 
probably more LCL than previous years, just because they're being selective in what SKUs, like what exact products they need to replenish versus what they have on hand and didn't sell last year. That's our take on the peak season this year, which typically begins in mid-August and lasts until mid-October. So we're now on to blank sailings. It's another thing we share every episode just to keep everyone informed of um, the capacity use of carriers coming Trans-Pacific. All these gray boxes show either a line that the carrier is completely omitted or sporadic vessels that they're pulling out of service to um, fill the capacity in other ships. And this one is Ningbo, so port nearby Shanghai, similar size, that has roughly 20, 25% omissions per week. What was the scheduled vessel departures uh, within the last year, giving a good indication that we're down to about 80% of number of ships from last year. And it's sporadic, but using a forwarder that's monitoring these vessel schedules is really important so your cargo doesn't get caught in one of these one or two week omissions and catch a delay. That's one port, that's just Ningbo. But we could show you a dozen others similar type of behavior. Or if you don't have anything else you want to say about blank salience, you know, move on to the next topic, which is new from last night. Um, Rachel or Emma, do you want to discuss that? Yep, I can kind of touch on it. So um, I know this has been quite a bit in the news lately um, with the strike that happened on July 1st. Um, it lasted about 13 days. Um, and then we we did see them come to an agreement, um, but just last night they they did issue that they rejected the agreement and strike activity will begin again. So we did put on a photo here for you guys to see what the Port of Vancouver is looking like as of last night. Um, so we do kind of predict to see more vessels waiting outside of the two ports in the next couple of days, um, just depending on how long this strike goes on for. But I guess as far as like the impact, I mean, we did see quite a big impact just in the 13 days of this strike. Um, and I know we're still kind of trying to recover from this last strike. And now that we're going into another one, uh, Ben, do you mind touching on what that impact is and what we could see potentially in the next weeks, two months? All right. Well, I can describe the impact on our operations staff and our response to it. Um, once it was announced, we started changing bookings and a lot of orders did to Los Angeles and Seattle and inland from there, or even routing through the East Coast and what's called RIPI. But as this prolonged and it went on for beyond a week, we started projecting this to take perhaps a month. So the tentative settlement wasn't a game changer for us. We didn't suddenly shift back to sending everything through Vancouver and Prince Rupert. You're going to see it, not congestion per se, but much more traffic through Los Angeles, Seattle, and the East Coast ports that would have been routed through Vancouver and Prince Rupert. And I think there's a factor at the bottom 15%, right? 15% of containers weren't coming through these Canadian ports, they're being redirected to the US ports. We've seen um, Canadian strike behavior last pretty long in Montreal a couple of years ago. That went on for over a month. I was surprised that it came to a strike, but once it was in place, I think we're just here to wait it out until it's completely resolved before booking through these two ports again. Now you will see some definite backlog because even though it opened up for what was it, more days since Tuesday to Thursday? Um, sorry, last Thursday to this Tuesday. Rail containers start moving along the lines, but there will certainly be a backlog once they settle and strike and resume movement to the Midwest from these areas. I project, I mean, three weeks or so, perhaps more.
Great, so we can go into some current events. A couple of things that have come, I guess, as of last night as well too. Um, but before we get into that one, uh, last Friday there was a bill passed with the House of Representatives um, to monitor China's visibility into the ocean containers moving in and out of the US. Um, ben, do you wanna put your take on this? Yeah, my two cents here is that import records are public records and you can see certain data points of who's shipping, what size, how many containers, when it's arriving, the basic information that is uh, part of our Freedom of Information Act records. Now there are subscriptions out there, so certain users can pay to view all this data, but the U.S. House of Representatives bill is trying to prevent um, a concern. It's the best way to describe it is this is like the freight industry's version of TikTok battle with China, okay? <laughs> Logic is the name of this platform. It's a Chinese platform like TikTok, and they're not so concerned about the information that's available right now, but as Logic releases a second phase, they're concerned of how the Chinese government might use the information that they're privy to. And that second phase of Logic is going to be information sharing with commercial documents, perhaps uh, U.S. military in, importation. And that, this is not just from China, it's, it's all import records that come by sea. So this is a bill that's trying to prevent lodging from being software that's used so that the Chinese government, if they choose to, would not be able to use whatever documentation is shared on that, that platform. Kind of like TikTok. I don't know if that's <laughs> working as a, an example here, but right. I mean, government employees are not allowed to have TikTok on their phones because the concern of what the Chinese government could possibly pull off those phones or monitor if they so choose to. Exactly. I think TikTok's a great example, Ben. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, and then the next one is Yellow Corp. I know that's been in the news a lot the last few weeks. Um, something did come out last night um, about a potential strike coming July 24th um, due to some payments um, not being done. So Owen, I know um, you kind of have a good um, expertise on this stuff. What What is your take on all this? And uh, what, what do you kind of what do you want these shippers to know based off of ideas and trying to put in place maybe a different plan if something were to happen? Yeah, I mean, it'd be generous to call call it expertise. But um, I mean, I don't think the yellow, also known as YRC, is going out of business by any means. Um, the government did give them a huge loan last year. And uh, through that, they have taken stake in the company. And they are a huge... Um, LTL carriers. So I don't see them going out of business per se, but with the, um, well, basically what happened last night is they withheld a $50 million um, pension payment into um, their forces, uh, you know, pension fund. And it's gone on with this long battle of suing each other and striking and all this stuff. So I think diversification is the key. Um, I wouldn't send everything through YRC Yellow. I think it's a, a bit of a mess right now. Um, do I think that they're going to be around in a year? I personally do. That's my opinion. But um, in terms of contingency plan and what to do right now, I think it's smartest to just not leave yourself susceptible to any issues that's caused by this. I know we're not moving anything with Yellow and haven't been since it began. We're hearing the same thing across the board. So you feel like YRC is going to still be around a year from now because the government has some stake in the company? And, and what yeah. About yeah, I mean, through their 30% investment into YRC and Yellow, um, the assets are backing the loan. Um, so if they were to liquidate, the, the government would be whole. So that that is one consideration. Um, but in the other token, it's... It's almost they're almost too huge to to crumble. Um, I know it's kind of been going on for about a month now, um, where different things have been coming out, um, just different information points. So 
it's just one of those prolonged sloppy battles that I think will be resolved hopefully soon. So while other LTL or truckload options are out there, use those until yellow and YRC are <clears throat> reliable again. Is that it? Yeah, I, I mean, that's personally how I think we are approaching it is, I mean, I, I, I don't think it's smart to go with them right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you are with them, I don't think you're in total jeopardy, but personally, from a risk standpoint, it's, it's good to avoid it for sure. Yeah. Way we're talking that you might be the only shipper on that truck. Who knows avoid some. Are there any other current events? Right um, that is all for current events. We do send out a recap email tomorrow with more information on all this. I know we went through quite a bit of topics today, short and sweet. So more information will be on that email tomorrow. Uh, but if there's any questions on like the blank sailings, GRI, the strikes, the bill that's being passed, yellow. I mean, we went through a lot of stuff. If there's any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to um, discuss it further. Um, or if there's any concern on your personal shipment, um, we'd be happy to go through that with you as well. Uh, but we do have a poll here, just wanting to hear from our audience on what you guys like about our webinars and where would you want, what would you like to hear more of? So we do have a poll on what region would you like to hear more information about on our webinar? So you should see it pop up on your screen here. Um, and we appreciate any of the feedback that you guys have. Um, but to go into next webinar, our next webinar is going to be August 16th at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, and we do offer a good mailing list that automatically gets you signed up for these. So you don't have to do it every month. If you like coming, I do recommend getting on that list. If you'd like to, you can email myself at rachel at interlogusa.com. Um, otherwise, Ben, Owen, do you guys have any last thoughts? No, it's been great to share this information and look forward to those questions. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Owen. Thanks for coming on this month. Um, ben, Emily, it's always a pleasure. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel.